Example scene three. So this one is a big um, five shot sequence. Uh, it's the longest sequence I've done. Uh, it was actually an earlier one that I did, so there's some cheating going on in places, but it's still got the most ambitious use of um, like a f kind of moving object with a grease pencil on it that I've done today. Because that shot there is legitimately, again, moving through 3D space. That particular one is not, is not a cheat at all. Um, if you look at this now, and you look at the fly through, you'll see the entire sequence again, but with the big fat wide view there on the left, where you can see all the cameras and you can see the object and you can see it's flying along and the camera's tracking it. So um, yeah, this was a really interesting one to try and work out. So as we go around again, now I've gone in a little closer on each of the uh, left-hand views so you can just kind of locate a little bit more where we are. So this second shot is, um, that one's just basically a uh, flat canvas over the camera, the close-up that we saw. This one is again, another cheat. So this one only actually works when you're looking through the camera angle. And once you're outside of it here, you can see it's all working on a, on a flat plane. And it's only from the right projection that it actually works. Uh, this one is legitimate. This is a uh, the the launch now into the dive, um, the gliding section. Essentially, this is all legitimately in 3D space. So I was really happy when I worked this one out because this was what I was aiming for. I didn't want to have to cheat all the time. Um, it's totally legitimate to do that kind of panel in front of the plane, uh, in front of the camera technique when it works, but that's not what I was looking for. And so this was the first time I actually achieved this. Um, I'll show you exactly how I achieved that in a moment. So like the previous example, I used a 3D object to help out here, because especially when you're having someone fly through the air, it's really, diff really, really difficult then to know where the hell you are in 3D space if you don't have something to anchor you. So um, yeah, this is the same process I used though, right? So you just move along to wherever your next position on the timeline is, you press I, you create your keyframes, keep doing that until you've got the path. So I've got a sort of front, middle and end pose here as an example of it. So you've got a bit of a dip, you've got a bit of an arc, which, um, so I've kind of lined up the viewport here and I've just to test the arc, see how that feels. Yep, it's good enough. So now we need to make a camera, so, Shift A, camera, press number pad zero to be inside the camera. We've done all this before, same process, but this is a little bit different now. So I'm not gonna keyframe this camera. So because I've already animated him moving through the environment and I wanna track him, I'm actually gonna create what's called a constraint. So with your camera object selected, on the right-hand side there, look for the constraint icon. It's like a big wheel and a small wheel tethered. Go to add and then track two. With the little eyedropper, click that, and then click your super simple man or whoever you've used, whatever object you've used. So it'll kind of pop in really weird here. Change the settings as shown here to minus Z and Y respectively in those brackets. And now you can see that the camera just follows, it keeps him centered and follows the object. So now I've kind of, now I've actually chosen the uh, super simple man object again, and I'm pushing him around changing his position because I want to do a bigger arc with him now. But as you can see, the camera is always staying centered on him. So I'm not touching the camera at all here. I'm just touching the object, moving him around, and the camera just keeps looking at it. The next step here is to create a grease pencil. So a grease pencil layer. So if we use our cursor to um, go on the surface of the object and then create the grease pencil, it'll, that's where it'll be created. Switch on all the canvases. And then uh, we're going to start drawing in a moment. Uh, remember to shift, remember to press tab and then switch back to drawing mode. And then zoom in to a more comfortable position and we can start drawing. So settings here now, because we've chosen our camera angle, choose origin in the first setting and then view in the second. This is because we've chosen our camera and we're comfortable with it. And it also means that it'll always be on the origin, it'll always be on the object but it'll always be facing the camera. So just start drawing, start roughing out your, your basic like first pose essentially here now. And then we need to parent it to the object. I probably should have done this a little sooner. So if we select the green pencil object, hold, um, hold shift, click the, the proxy object, control P, parent, just like we did before. And now you'll see that as before, 
everywhere the object moves, the grease pencil object moves too. And so you can just go through now and start drawing in your different keyframes. So what you'll find is it kind of holds all right for a little while. And then once it gets to a certain point in the, uh, like the rotation of the object, it'll look, look weird. So that's what you need to draw your new keyframes. This is exactly how I did uh, the scene with the wingsuit dive. I just kept going, you just keep going now until you're happy with it. Here's a short time lapse of uh, the roughing process and then the cleanup process after it. So once all your layers are done, your animation, your cleanup, your fills, you're done. And that's the that's how we get here. That's how we get to this kind of uh, hybrid workflow. The next thing then I'm going to talk about, the last thing of this sequence, um, is how we switch from camera to camera. So in this sequence, we've got a total of five cameras. I'll just show you how to switch between two. So if you look on the left here, you'll see that as it gets down to that point, it switches to the next camera. So um, that's done by making markers on the timeline. Now, Blender actually does have a camera sequencer, like a video editor type thing, but I'm, I haven't learned that yet, so I can't teach you that. But I can teach you the way I did this. So I'm going to assume that you've set up any cameras you want and need throughout the sequence. So like I, I did, I had the multiple cameras set up and everything. And then you need to decide where you want those to cut. So something I would also advise is up on the top right hand side of the um, the viewport, the, uh, the, the options, I can't remember what they call it, like the controller or something. Up there, there's a search bracket. If you type camera, then it'll get rid of everything else but your camera and only show your cameras. That'll make it really easy for you to uh, navigate and, and find <clears throat> the cameras that you want to use. Okay, so back to the scene now and I'll demonstrate how I switch the cameras over where I want it. So on the timeline here, you can see I've, I've at a certain point and I want to create a marker here, which is where I want to switch over. So I press M and that little icon came up at the bottom. There. So now I want to make sure that the camera that I want to switch to is selected. In this case, it's camera three. And then once that's <clears throat> once that's established, you go to um, the marker option and then you go down to bind camera to marker and you will see that the naming of that camera icon or the marker is actually bound to a camera and so you'll stick in that camera until you do another marker on the timeline so that's what i'm doing now i'm moving to the point where i want to switch to the next camera and i'll make another marker and then i'll do the same thing again i'll go to marker and then bind to camera now it switches to that point. <clears throat> so as we scrub through, we're in camera three right now. We'll scrub through, and as soon as it hits that marker, it'll switch to the new camera. Oop, there we are, we're in camera four there for the remainder. And that's how you do it. 